All right, guys, this is the first video in a new series. I don't have an official name for it. It's going to be a tone series for a Hyperreg Kiesel. I thought a very fitting tone to show off for the very first episode of it. I'm sure you could already guess it from what I played and the look of this guitar. I'm not sure if I can say it, but it's, uh, you know, very eruption sounding. Uh, this preset is called Fabled Marsha. I'm sure you can figure out what Fabled Amp this is supposed to be sounding like. Let's take a look at the settings we have here, of course, in EVH style fashion we have all the knobs cranked all the way up so this push knob right here for those of you who are unfamiliar with what it does this controls the amount of signal being sent to the power amp section of the amp so obviously on those old fabled marsha sounding amplifiers they didn't have a master volume so you got the gain just from cranking the amplifier so that's essentially what this push knob is doing with it all the way at 10 it's getting the max amount of gain out of you know this style of circuit well if you look at the gain knob it is essentially all the way off i have it 0.5 but i honestly might be using more gain than EVH used back in the day. If you go back and listen to those records, he had very, very little gain going on. He actually got a lot of the gain out of how hard he was smacking the strings while he was playing. That's why if you go back and listen to old VH records, for lack of a better word, I'm not sure if I can actually say the name, you hear Eddie really digging into the strings. He's getting, you know, kind of harmonics randomly because of how hard he's digging in. So with the infusion amplifier, cranking everything to 10 like this, having the gain knob at zero kind of gives you that cranked Marsha-esque tone. And as you can see, the boost pedal is on here, but I'm really not hitting the front end with very much level. It's almost unity gain. And the reason for that being is I'm not using this to add saturation. That's not really what I want. I'm using this to kind of capture that sponge sagginess that Eddie had to his tone. So what I'm doing with the shape EQ and the mastering EQ is I'm adding in a bit, you know, of the low end, low mids, not cranking it. What I'm really trying to add here is the sponginess, the sagginess to it, not necessarily a huge bottom end. Same with the mastering EQ. And with this top end, I'm really trying to get that really bright top end with a lot of attack that those old Marsha style amps had when, especially when cranked. Let's hear this again and see what we're sounding like. <laughs> By the way, this preset is going to be available in the description of this video and will probably get added as just a stock factory preset in a future update. So again, EVH used much less gain than a lot of people think when trying to dial in that type of tone. As you can hear this, when you just pick really lightly, it's not that saturated. But then if you really dig in, it saturates the amp a lot more. If you have a different guitar than me with different output pickups, it's going to sound different. If you have something hotter, it's going to be saturating it more. So you might want to play around with these gain and push knobs to really get that perfect level of gain for your setup. Um, it also sounds cool if you, you know have a little bit of gain and turn this push knob down. Let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> Still sounds really awesome. I like it with everything dimed, just maybe a hair of gain on there. I feel like that feels good. I don't know if it's a visual thing, seeing all the knobs, you know, dimed all the way, or if it actually does sound better like that. If you're thinking you need a little bit of more of that top end grind, you might want to experiment with maybe cranking the 8K and the 4K up a little bit. So just experiment, but this is a great starting point to get that classic sound. Also, if you notice, I have the room knob set to five and the air cranked all the way. So air is just really going to be that top end sizzle. It's not like it's physically making it move air anymore. This plugin is really great at feeling like it's an actual amplifier pushing air, but this knob does nothing to affect how that feels. And I have the room on five to really give you that amp in a room feel like those old records have. Now check this out. So it's not super apparent when you hear it's playing, but 
the feel and the overall tone, if you take it off and then put it back on, it's a huge difference. Let's turn that up to 10 and see what that sounds like. That probably sounds pretty cool too. <laughs> All right, that riff does sound a bit goofy and standard tuning, especially because it was in drop C sharp, but you get the point. The room knob is meant, not meant to be a room reverb. It's meant to be a room simulation. So it does add a little bit of reflections and stuff to the tone, but it's not a full on room reverb. It's supposed to make the amp feel like it's in the room with you. So what I haven't talked about yet is this awesome tribute series of guitars we are doing. There's only four that we pre-made, but if you wanted to order something exactly like this, you totally could. We did a splatter finish to emulate that iconic pattern on that classic guitar. This one is actually a 22 fret Delos with the Floyd Rose. I don't know if you guys remember Jeff mentioning adding the Floyd Rose option on the 22 fret Delos for a specific reason. Well, this is the specific reason we wanted to pay tribute to an icon who meant so much to so many of us here at the shop, not just from his playing, but all of the cool stuff he did with modding his guitars and everything. Jeff actually was his idea to make a handful of tribute guitars to the man himself. And I think they came out really awesome. There is, like I said, this 22 fret Delos, which is probably the most similar to, you know, the iconic guitar. We also have an A2 and Aries Titanium series, and then just a standard Aries, and they all have a very similar setup. This guitar has an M12 SD in the bridge, which is gonna be more similar to what EVH was using in the later days of his career. We have a Mark single coil in the neck. This is hooked up, not unhooked like the original one, so it's totally usable. Let's hear me just flipping between the bridge, the middle, and the neck really quick, so you can, you know, hear the versatility of this instrument. Here is that M12 SD in the bridge. <laughs> Here's the middle position. Here's on the neck. Without touching the volume knob, it cleans up really nicely. Could be a really cool effect if you are trying to do something like plugging straight into a higher gain amplifier and just flipping pickups to you know get a lower gain, almost clean tone. Check it out. And this plugin is super dynamic as well. You can just play lighter and it'll clean up nice. You can roll back your volume knob. Check it out. Another thing I want to touch on really quick is the delay. So we kind of tried to already pre-dial in an EVH style delay with this preset for you. So that's going to be pre-dialed in for you with the preset. As soon as you load it up, the delay is going to be at this setting. It's going to get you right in the ballpark, like I said. That's kind of what we were going for with this preset, to get you in the ballpark of those iconic tones. You can tweak to taste and shouldn't have to tweak too much to get it right in your sweet spot for what you're wanting out of this. So this was just a quick first installment of the Tone Series video. I'll probably think of a better name for it eventually. I just want to show you how truly versatile this plugin is and how many different type of tones it can pull off very convincingly. It's not a one trick pony. It's an extremely versatile plugin that can do just about anything you want it to do. And I think this is a great tone, kind of kick this off. And I figured I can kill two birds with one stone and show off this awesome uh, limited edition tribute series 
series we were doing. Like I said, we made four of these. If you're watching this video anytime a couple days after I'm posting this, these are probably all gone, but you can order one just like it by just calling the guys 858 Guitars, and we can build something like this for you at any point. It's not just limited, this type of finish to these four guitars. So I hope you like the tone I dialed in. Let me know what other tones you would like me to make with Hyper and Kiesel for this series. Leave them in the comments below, and yeah, I'll see you next time.